As you practice with computation of residues, you probably notice that sometimes the run expansions can become a bit tedious. So that's the main reason why now I will derive for you a general formula for the residues, which avoids the necessity of Laurent expansions. This formula is extremely helpful, and I'll show you how to work with it right after the derivation. We will also study a bit lighter version of this formula, which is also encountered quite often. So as a start, let's write down the general formula for the Laurent expansion of the function near the pole of order n. f of z equals c minus n over z minus a to the nth power plus c minus n plus 1 over z minus a to the power of n minus 1 and so on plus c minus 1 over z minus a plus c naught and so on as a first step let's multiply both parts of this equation by z minus a to the power of n this way we remove all the negative powers of z minus a in the right hand side Now what we will do, we will perform a successive differentiation of this formula step by step. And we will try to figure out the pattern. So let's find the first derivative from both parts. In the right hand side, the first term, c minus n, disappears. And its place now is occupied by the second term in this chain, c minus n plus 1 and the powers of all z minus a factors in all the rest of the terms are diminished by unity. So we have c minus n plus 2 times 2 times z minus a, and so on. All the terms also acquires prefactors. For example, term c minus 1 acquires the prefactor n minus 1, as well as term c naught and so on. Now, to reveal the pattern, let's perform the second differentiation. Again, the first term on the right-hand side, c minus n plus 1, disappears, and its place is occupied by the next term in this chain, c minus n plus 2. And term c minus 1 acquires an additional prefactor, n minus 2. while the power of z minus a is diminished in total by 2 already. So it's n minus 3. So now let's try to see the pattern. Well, first look at term c minus 1. After the first differentiation, it acquired n minus 1 prefactor. After the second one, n minus 2. So make a guess what would happen after, say, n minus 1 differentiation. Well, it's obvious it will be n minus 1 factorial, right? Now let's have a look at the frontal terms. As we noticed, each differentiation removes the first term on the right-hand side. So after n-1 differentiations, all n-1 terms on the right-hand side will be removed. But that means that after n-1 differentiations, the first place in this chain on the right-hand side will be occupied by precisely c-1 term. And its power, initially it was n-1, but after n-1 differentiations, it will become zero. So naturally, the first term again we will have no z minus a power. So let's write it down. On the left hand side, we have n minus 1's derivative. While on the right hand side, we'll have n minus 1 factorial times c minus 1 plus c naught times obviously n factorial times z minus a to the first power, right? And then all the rest of the terms with the raising powers of z minus a. So as you probably observe, we are getting closer to our goal. We need to isolate term c minus 1, and we almost achieved it. And our final step is setting z equals a in both parts of this equation. This way, we will eliminate all the terms which stand to the right of this c minus 1 expression. And here it is. This way, we obtained the desired formula for our residue. The residual function f of z at point z equals a contains 
n minus 1 derivatives. So it's 1 over n minus 1 factorial, dn minus 1 over dz n minus 1, f of z times z minus a to the power of n. And then we take the limit z equals a at the end of the calculation. And let's see how this formula works in practice. Our first example would be a function f of z equals cosine of z over z minus 1 to the second power. Well, first of all, this function has a second order pole at point z equals 1, so let's find the residue at this pole. So we use our formula 1 over 1 factorial, which is 1, the first derivative of f of z times z minus 1 squared. And then we set z equals 1 at the end of the calculation. So once we plug in the function f of z, we immediately noted that z minus 1 squared in denominator and in denominator cancel each other, and we are left with the first derivative of cosine of z, and point z equals 1. And so we obtain the result, minus sine of 1. Quite fast and effective. Our second example is in fact the example from our previous video. Function f of z equals 1 over z minus 1 squared times z squared plus 1. And let's find the residues at point z equals 1 and z equals plus minus sine. Again, we see that z equals 1 is the second order pole, so first let's find the residue at this point. According to our formula, it reads the first derivative of 1 over z squared plus 1 times z minus 1 squared in the denominator and times z minus 1 squared in the denominator. As before, z minus 1 squared cancels, and we are left with the first derivative of 1 over z squared plus 1 which is minus 2z over z squared plus 1 squared. And taking at point z equals 1, we obtain minus 2 over 4, minus 1 half. The next pole, z equals i. Well, actually, that's a first order pole. And now I think it's a good time to write down a simplified version of our general formula for a simple pole. Indeed, we see that since n equals 1, this formula doesn't require any differentiation at all. So let's write this down. The residue of function f of z at arbitrary simple pole z equals a is simply given by the expression f of z times z minus a when z is tending to a. And now let's apply this formula here. So we take our function f of z and multiply it by z minus i. But before we do this, let's expand the denominator z squared plus 1 and z plus i times z minus i. And again, as before, we have this cancellation, z minus i, in the denominator and denominator. And setting z equals i, we obtain the final expression for the residue. It's 1 over i minus 1 squared times 2i. i minus 1 squared is simply minus 2i, and we obtain 1 quarter. And as you remember, this is precisely our answer, which we obtain using Laurent expansion. And finally, the third example, f of z is equal to 1 over z squared plus 1 cubed. We see that this function has third order poles at points z equals plus minus i. So let's find the residue of this function, say, at point z equals i. Again, we employ our formula, and this time it will require the second order differentiation. So we have 1 over 2 factorial, which is 1 half, the second derivative of 1 over z squared plus 1 cubed multiplied by z minus i cubed. And as usual, it's desirable to expand the function in the denominator. And let's do this. So we obtain z minus i cubed over z minus i cubed times z plus i cubed. So z minus i cubed cancelled. And we are left with the second derivative of 1 over z plus i cubed. And this derivative is simply 12 over z plus i to the fifth. And then we set z equals i. And obtain the result. 6 over to i to the fifth. Which yields minus 3 sixteenths of i. So now you probably notice that the main advantage of this formula is that it works so quick. And as a final remark, let's obtain an alternative formula for the first order pole. It's also very suitable and is used quite often. 
So suppose our function has a first order pole. That means that this function can always be represented as a ratio of two functions. The function in the denominator doesn't have the root at this pole, while the function in the denominator has a first order root. Like this, f of z is represented as h of z over g of z, where h of a is non-zero, while g of a is zero, and the zero is a first order root. Now let's write down the leading Taylor expansions for both of these functions in the vicinity of point z equals a. For h of z function, the leading term will be simply h of a, while for g of z function, it will be g prime of a times z minus a. And now look at this formula. It's just the leading term of its Laurent expansion near the first order pole z equals a. So this way, this prefactor h of a over g prime of a is nothing but our residue of this function at this point. And this is our alternative simplified formula. The residue of the function at a simple pole is simply equal to h of a over g prime of a. And let's address a quick example to see just how it works. Consider a function f of z equals 1 over z cubed plus 1. And the assignment is to find the residues of this function at all finite points. So the function in the denominator, z cubed plus 1, has three distinct roots of the first order. So the function has three simple poles at point z equals negative 1 and then points e to the power of plus minus i pi by 3. And now let's use our formula. h of z in this case is equal to 1, while g of z is equal to z cubed plus 1. So according to our formula, the residue of f of z at each of these points is given by a simple expression. It's 1 over 3z squared, where z is equal either to negative 1 or e to plus minus i pi by 3. Well, that's why this formula is so suitable. In many cases, it gives a general formula for the residue at any pole of the function. And now we simply plug in our z's and obtain the residue 1 third at point z equals minus 1 and 1 third times e to minus plus 2i pi by 3 for the rest of the points. And that's it for residues. So now we have a good start for an integration techniques.